But today is our day of celebration. At last we can say that BAA has withdrawn its application for a second runway. There have been so many nails knocked into this coffin, but it, it's that's delight it. we're delighted that at last it's dead and buried. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And our victory and our celebration are all the more sweet because they weren't always certain and assured. Also because they've been so long in coming. Uh, at this time, when we're celebrating, we also remember that we've had some very hard and difficult times to go through together. <laughs> Over there, okay. I'm sure you'll always remember, and I'll always remember, that awful time in June 2002 when the government put forward its consultation paper and was threatening us not just with one extra runway, but with two extra runways and three extra runways. And that was immensely depressing. And then, of course, uh, in December 2003, after we'd all worked so hard and put together our case against the second and third and fourth runway, the government came out with its white paper and said that it wanted a second runway here at Stansted. And so it's gone on. Uh, we've argued consistently against government policy. Uh, sorry, I can't even turn the pages over. <laughs> but no matter how strong the case we presented, we were told time and time again uh, whether it was on measuring noise, on climate change, on economics, we were told time and time again that you couldn't go against government policy as it was set out in the air transport white paper. But we went on challenging government policy. For six long years we challenged it. And then in the recent Heathrow judgment, we were told that BAA and the government could no longer rely on the air transport white paper. And then with the change of government, there was a change of policy. For six years we have persevered and we had persisted. Uh, and now that there's been a change of government and a change of government policy, within six days BAA has thrown in the towel. It just goes to show how little confidence they had really in the economic and environmental aspects of their case. I was asked yesterday whether or not SSE was responsible for this outcome or whether it was due to other changes like the economic depression or the new realization or the increasing realization of the dangers of climate change and i said then and i say again now just imagine what would have happened if there'd been no opposition if there'd been no sse in the air transport white paper it set out on the board behind us the government wanted to have the second runway up and running or down and running in 2011 2012 just a year's time if we hadn't opposed it at every step of the way then we would be facing a second runway at Stansted yeah. next year. Yeah. We tackled the government, we tackled BAA on every front, on every issue. We never let them get away with anything at all. And in the end, they were so scared of legal challenges, it was taking them months, even years, to make those straightforward decisions. And without our opposition, and without that of our allies, uh, we will be facing a second runway now. Um, and in the meantime, we were lobbying both the Conservatives and the Lib Dems about the iniquities of a second runway and all the, all the environmental damage and the fact that it didn't make economic sense. And they've now come out on our side. At this point, I want to thank our MP, Alan Hazelhurst, who's been a, a source of strength to us throughout the campaign. He would very much have wanted to be with us here uh, today. Um, unfortunately, he had the, the small matter of the Queen's speech to deal with. <laughs> but, uh, he does say that in the Speaker's room, he'll be raising a glass uh, in sympathy with us.